Good morning. It's Matt. It's telling me that we're going live. We'll wait for it to catch up in just a moment. Howdy, I'm Matt. Uh, it tells us that we are now live. Welcome aboard for today's live RC build session. So let me go and jump across to the main screen. Uh, and yeah, welcome aboard. Uh, in today's live episode, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Firefly, which uh, I've had here for quite a while, must admit, along with some other models as well. And that's the whole purpose behind these Build Saturdays. It's the time when me and you can get at the workbench, we can work on some models. Uh, I did see from Vince in the live chat on the right hand side of the screen uh, that Vince is not at the beach today because he joined him in the last live session at the beach. Uh, so really for you to get involved in today's discussion is let me know what you're building on or what you are going to be working upon. If you're just chillaxing with a cup of coffee, then happy days. Uh, do remember you can get involved in the live chat which is going on on the right hand side of your screen. And also remember, if you're watching the recorded version of today's live build, don't forget down in the comment section underneath this video, uh, you can pass on your comments as well, what you're building on, what you're working on, etc, etc. So with that said, mm, Phil, thank you for confirming the audio is good. I do appreciate that. A very good morning to Chris, Steph, Kevin, uh, Vince here as well. Dave's out there too. Both Daves are in here too. Three Daves are in here this morning uh, and Phil as well. And I think I missed Chris at the very beginning as well. So what I'm going to immediately do is jump across the workbench because I'm here actually trying to finish off the little Vortini. Now, I'm going to, it's a build Saturday. That's the whole point of this live episode. So I want, I just want to get these servos in there flat. That's my goal. So if you didn't catch up or weren't aware of the Vortini, we had a live episode literally just a couple of days ago. Uh, on Thursday where we did the unboxing and we had the first look. I know many of you were very interested in that model uh, as, I, as, I, as I was. I've been seeing the videos as it's, as it's been coming out and I'm here just literally just building it at the moment. Uh, I am just working some of these servos down uh, and if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm using a blowtorch uh, which is actually one which I bought from Amazon. It's meant to be used in a, in, in a kitchen I think. Uh, I'm heating up a piece of uh, hot, uh, just a bent push rod basically, uh, and then just making that, so you can see up there on the top camera, making that servo uh, flush fit inside of there, which is working out quite well. I think that's close, well, I say close enough. I'm actually not that happy. I'm going to go back and do a little bit more. So if you've never done this before, absolute fantastic way of being able to create not only a clean but also a strong uh, little recess within uh, EPP foam or even EPO foam for that matter uh, is just literally melting it and uh, I'm just using a blowtorch and old push rod yeah look at that I don't know how well that's coming out on the camera uh, but you'll have to take my word for it that is now definitely a flush fit in there I really am liking that oh those observant ones of you may have noticed the extra bit of carbon strip I've just put in the leading edge in there. And the reason why I've put a piece of carbon strip up here on the leading edge of the model, which wasn't included in the kit, I've added this separately, uh, it's because I was worried about uh, cutting out a great big hole on the top. And also, I do like to always try and put an extra bit of carbon in there. I know we've got a, a spar going all the way through, but if there's anywhere which is going to take a whack, it will be up there on the leading edge and anything which we can do uh, to, to, to lessen the damage, uh, the better. So while I'm here and while I'm working on it, this one does need to go down uh, about a millimeter on the back and about a hair's width uh, on the front. So I'm also gonna do that one as well. I did just mark it out with masking tape on the wing. Uh, I've got both servos in exactly the same spot. And then what I went on and did was just cut around with a craft knife uh, dug in as, de as deep as what I needed to. I put a mark on the, well, I used to put marks uh, on the uh, craft knife so I didn't dig in too deep, but I've kind of got that knack of getting it right now. Uh, and uh, I let me explain. Let me just get this done and we'll take a look together. So there we go. That's all done in there. What I do normally do is get a Sharpie pen and the craft knife and then mark on get the servo, mark how deep it is on the craft knife, and then when I'm cutting in to cut out the servo, a placeholder for it, uh, is that I don't end up cutting too deep. And then of course, just get in there with a pair of pliers, poke in and twist, poke in and twist, 
uh, and you do get a really clean cut uh, when you're doing that and perfect yeah 99.9% .9 of the way there so you'll see up there on the camera really nice flush fit uh, which I've got there on that servo. Uh, I will just use a little dab of hot glue to hold it in, in situ at the front and the back just in case I need to get it out later. Uh, and I've put the servo wires through uh, and I will leave the Vortini alone. I just wanted to get that over and done with because then later on today I can glue on the wings uh, and we really are on the home straight because I've already been, you probably didn't spot that off camera, I have already been and glued up the fuselage today uh, that was set in this morning. Yeah, really straightforward. Uh, do need to put a bit, a bit more E6000 glue in the middle just to stiffen it up there. I think I'll also put a, a rod all the way down there because I'm worried about uh, the flex back there from the previous cut which you and had done in there. Uh, again, this was a, uh, a pre-production uh, build uh, or kit which I've got here. So yeah, I need to work around that. Very simple, just one or two carbon strips down there. Uh, and we'll solve that and I'll need to make sure that spar is straight as well because currently it's not. Uh, I've already cut out the camera nose uh, for the camera up on the end. And Anyway, I could chat about the Vortini all day. I'll do a separate episode. The point of today's live chat uh, was for us to have a look at the Firefly. So, with that said, what I'm actually going to do, the Firefly, let's jump across to the desktop. Uh, and if I choose the right one... So if I'll go there and there and then choose desktop. There you go. I bet that looks a little bit confusing. Uh, this is the model which we're going to be taking a look at today. It's called the Firefly. It's also from E-Wings, the same company, which or the same chap uh, who made the Fortini. I do feel a little bit guilty. This one has been here for quite a while and I'm only just getting around to building it. Uh, so I'd already planned to do the Firefly this Saturday and... Really luckily, it kind of went hand in hand that the Vortini, uh, Ewan was able to get it across to me uh, very sure, well uh, this week. So that was happy day. So I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, it's a, The basic synopsis of the Firefly is that A, it's a flying wing, uh, and B, uh, is that, uh, and B, it's designed to take a 5200 4S pack. We, we've joked, <laughs> uh, with me and, me and Andy that uh, it's called the Bolton mod which is that you basically make every single model which you fly take a 5200 4S because then you get loads and loads of flight time it's 4S you've got plenty of power uh, and um, yeah it's kind of like standardizes batteries if that makes sense uh, and this rod all for all intents and purposes was designed around the 5200 4S pack of originally the Multistar 10C but the Turner G 12C is just as good as better of a battery pack from what I've seen uh, in the wild so yeah that's where it's come, come around it is a um, wire cut EPP it's just like the Fortini because it's EPP we know it's going to be tough as sausages uh, and it, it when you do wrap it around a tree the tree might come off worse um, unless you really really hard like it did with the other wing down there which I mean, you really need to fix uh, so yeah well EPP is and especially the black stuff really really tough so uh, not affiliated with Ewan in any shape or form I bought this one ages ago because it looked cool and now I'm finally just getting around to building it so uh, that is uh, the Firefly we'll go and take a look at that now let's go and get these bits back right there we go and that also means I can get back to your chat so if you have been having a chit chat uh, on the live stream. And by the way, those of you which have just been and joined us, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Uh, in today's live RC build session, we are gonna be taking a look at the Firefly, the model which we were literally just chatting about. Uh, I've got the box down here with a load of different parts. And like I said, I do feel a bit of guilty. It has been here for a while. Uh, and today, that's one of the purposes of this live build session, which we do every single Saturday here at the workbench, so that we can get at least one model in progress or two because uh, we did have a little sneak preview at the Vortini as well so good morning everybody who's uh, on here live as well uh, howdy Chris by the way just seen I force too deep uh, turn up RC hobby good morning Dan good morning uh, Vince uh, oh Vince says all planes in peak for tomorrow mine are not in peak condition for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, just looking at mine as well. Uh, so with that said, let's go and have a look at this. Uh, I do have other random models in this 
box, <laughs> if I'm honest. What's actually happened is that over a period of time, I've kind of just thrown random models in here. And this, I think, was the uh, the what, the cheap what, which I'd uh, been and picked up at some point. Uh, that looks like a fuselage. We might be right there. That I don't know if that's the wingtips or not. That looks like, oh, I have been in here and I've done it. Right, that's definitely, that's a fuselage from somewhere else. I don't know what that came from. Really should put these parts to one side uh, so I can work out what is supposed to be in here and what should not be in here. There's quite a lot of weight in there. So yeah, that one there. Yeah, anyway, that's uh, that goes with that one. That one, I don't know. Ah, now we're getting some bits in here. Right, so yeah, I think I put some, I definitely put some parts from one model, more than one model, uh, in the same box, and that's the way it kind of cropped. From... Tell you what, we'll chuck it all out, because there's quite a lot in here, and all the bits which don't actually belong to the uh, thingy, we'll chuck back in the box. How's that for a plan? Right. Push rods, we'll probably need those. Uh, ooh, those are definitely for the Firefly. That is not part of that model. Let's get rid of some of these pieces as well. Uh, look out for a build on that one. I also have a miscellaneous model, uh, which I think the wife wanted the box because she took the model out of the box and put it in a carrier bag, and the carrier bag's now hung up inside the house, uh, and I've just not been back to look at it. Oh yeah, the Firefly definitely does not have wheels with it. Uh, so we'll get rid, of the, get rid of those. Ooh, aha, that looks like a serious, and I mean it, serious set of control horns. Really looking forward to uh, using those. We've got a collection of core flutes. Excuse me, that does say the Firefly. I don't know how well that's coming out. Uh, on there. That's the Firefly. Which bit should we got in there? We've got some push rods. We've got some random tools in the way. A quick look. Right. Uh, it's nice to see that we've got some extra fins in there. I've, if I show you one of my other models, uh, so you may be wondering what these bits are, uh, and they are fins. And in fact, I think Ewan sent me uh, some fins uh, for this model as well, some 3D printed ones, and they're here on a, another bag. My, my, my office is a mess at the moment. Uh, and yeah, adding these fins, can I show you a, a different example? Because it really, really did help. So that is the WR, in fact I'll swip, switch across to the main camera. I will get, get around to sorting out some uh, shortcut keys. Right, uh, that is my spec wing, which is currently non-functional because I hit the wing so hard I broke both servos in it, uh, in one tree. Uh, anyway, getting to my point, I did, uh, and you can get these on Thingiverse because I put the, set the file, sent the files up there as well. Uh, these 3D printed little fins, uh, which we saw originally come out on the Hardcore series from uh, of models from Chris Click, they really do help uh, with keeping the model straight. Uh, there's um, there's a, a, a feature. Is that the word which I'm looking for? Yeah, uh, a behaviour is the correct word of models which hunt. I'm sure you have all had this uh, with your models at some point in time where the model is hunted like that. It's trying to hunt to find its straight position. Uh, the S800 is well known to do that, to hunt, and also other models as well. The Big Drac uh, has been known to hunt as well. Anyway, the, uh, the inclusion of the vertical fins, these fins on the top really do help straighten this model out. That was one thing which I spotted early on with this spec wing, uh, was the, and again on my other one uh, from right wing, is that, yeah, it would waggle, it would hunt on its way in, and literally putting those fins in, uh, I can't remember how long it took them to print, but whatever it, it took, they were very simple to put in, and they absolutely transformed the flyability of the model because it just didn't hunt in the sky and you feel, you feel so much more locked in. So that was why uh, I was very happy to see us that we got some vertical fins being included uh, with the Firefly because it does make a difference to the flyability uh, of the model. So quickly just going back to your chat on there. 
so we'll click on your... Uh, <laughs> right, okay, sorry. Uh, so a quick little morning. Two of for Vorti cooked, <laughs> shaken and stirred, Mr. Moggy. Uh, I've been out, <laughs> give you a heads up, I've already been out and walked 10 kilometers this morning uh, and actually did it in record time. I'm quite chuffed myself this morning. Anyway, I will quite happily derail most conversations. So let's push on. Uh, I don't think that those were meant for that model. So I'm gonna stick them down there and move them out of the way. Let's go and get ourselves acquainted uh, with the Firefly. So you can see I've already been in here and half built it. I also don't think that's part of that model either. So I'll move that out of the way. That's going to make an interesting build Saturday when I work out which parts which <laughs> went well, went, went where. Right, so it looks like I've half been in here already uh, and I've glued in some strip into the back using you who pour. Uh, it's going to get an idea of this model and see how big it is. Uh, I also need to go and identify some servos to go in it as well. That seems about right in there too. Fantastic. So yeah, let's get a quick idea on this one and then we'll work out a battle plan uh, on what we need to do uh, to, get, to get this model over the line. Right, so there we go. We've got it laid out and you'll notice the battery barrel. Go and grab a 5200 4S. Uh, so we get an idea of what the battery looks like in the nose, right? That's a bigger one. Let's go and grab a 5200 4S. We'll stick that up in the nose. There. So we can see the model is pretty much specifically designed uh, around the 5200 4S pack. Uh, I am a little bit 50-50. Well, now I want to put a HD camera up in the nose. So, yeah, I'm going to have to fit in a... I don't know which one I'm going to go for. Do I put the 3S up in the nose, which is a bit of a brick, or the Runcam 5? Uh, I might do that very shortly. Oh, by the way, look out for a review on the Runcam 5S coming out very shortly, because while the video quality is very good, its functionality is not very good. I'll give you the example. I've got one clip for 20 seconds. And that's all I've got out of it for a whole flying day. Because when you press the record button and the memory card is full, is that it will tell you that it's recording. And it will sit there and blink the lights at you. No warnings or anything like that. And it will just, every time you press record, it will just record over the last video it did uh, until it's run out of memory. And of course, if you've only got a tiny bit of memory, well, enough for 20 seconds, very annoying. Uh, so yeah, look out for uh, uh, an interesting review on that uh, very shortly, shall we say. Right, so anyway, coming back uh, to the Firefly, I have been, and already, by the looks of it, marked out, so I'm going to go with my previous cuts on there, uh, so it looks like, and I've been in there with a the knife, so it looks like I started this one, just never got around to finishing it as well. Uh, good morning, Kev, as well. Good morning, Matthias. Uh, good morning, Julian, too. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Matthias says, anyone tried fins on the Z84? Uh, Matthias, when it comes to the Z84, just make sure it's nose heavy. The uh, CG marks underneath are wrong. You always want to run the Z84 nose heavy. Uh, otherwise, you do run into issues with uh, tip stalling, <laughs> which I've definitely had before myself. So, uh, yeah, not very good fun. So make sure it's... Uh, Nose heavy. Anyway, get back to this one. There are no servos in the box, so it doesn't look like I'd actually earmarked any specific servos to this. Also, I am very curious. So I have been to mark that on there, uh, but I didn't go back and mark on the edit, uh, on the surfaces. So, I'm, yeah, where's the main spar in this one? Yeah, the servos are going. Uh, I've got a choice of either keeping this, the original servo position, which I'd earmarked, or I could push them up full, forwards a bit. I think if I push them up forwards a bit, I'm going to cause myself more issues than what I'm going to gain. So they are going to go and have to go there, which is a bit of an issue, because I'm guessing the CG is about here, which by the time we stuck a great big motor on the back, we might run ourselves into a bit of a problem. So with that said, let's go and quickly pencil in where this... Uh, aileron surface needs to go and this sanest way of doing this is taking it back apart again 
Now what I'm doing here is making sure I don't want to keep the original line which I used, I think that's coming out of the camera, uh, is, if I put that there, okay, uh, is that I would have got a set square and mark that off at 90 degrees to the rear surface so the push rod's always pushing forwards. But what I forgot, neglected to do uh, was to mark uh, where that comes out on the aileron surface. So I'm gonna quickly do the same on the opposite side and I'm just gonna put uh, that's left, so I'll put an L on that one. Let's get that one unplugged, so undone. And take a look at the opposite side. So let me just quick, let me go and mark this one off, and then I'll explain how I got to the placement of where that servo is and its alignment uh, without using any cutout templates or anything like that. So I'm just gonna mark that on there and then put R on the back. And by the way, I always, the way which I always orientate my models is from behind. So for me, the right wing is the wing to the right of the model when you look from behind the model. It doesn't matter if it's a wing or another model at all. Uh, just look to the right hand side. That for me is the right wing and then the left wing as if you were actually physically sat inside of the model. I've, I've seen other people name the other wings and stuff from the opposite direction and it really just didn't make sense to me. So uh, whichever format you pick, stick with it as long as it makes sense to you uh good morning killer dave right so jet julian you've already had a c1 chaser really really nice model uh yeah there's not much bad which you can say about a c1 chaser to be honest uh the only negative uh i'd probably say in comparison to a flyer firefly if we're doing a like by like like by like comparison is that uh eat molded uh, sorry epp generally stronger than EPO foam, but then it's horses for courses, one's a little bit cheaper than the other, depends what you want to be doing it with it. If the chances are you're gonna be wrapping it around a tree more often than not, then you'll wanna go with a tougher airframe where wire cut EPP is kind of a no brainer uh, to go for it. Killer Dave's gone in there saying the Firefly is epic. Yeah, uh, though this model has been out for a while. If you actually own a Firefly, please do put in the live chat what you think of this model. Don't just take it from me, because I haven't been out and flown it yet, uh, but I know many of you already own a Firefly, and as such, you, you're in a far superior position than me to pass on judgment on what the model's like, how it handles, what kind of flight times, what kind of motors you've been using, etc., etc. So do share that uh, in, the left, or in, in the live chat, because I'd appreciate your opinion, and I'm sure everybody on here as well uh, would also appreciate your opinion and your findings as well. So please say how long you've had it, what your thoughts are on it, what kind of setup you've got, what servos did you go for, what kind of flight time, what kind of uh, motor did you go for and prop combo. Uh, and also, have you wrapped it around a tree yet? <laughs> you can do that in the live chat uh, on the right hand side of the screen. So uh, GMAX just been and popped in there as well. Yeah, please do share your opinions with the model. Um, because there's nothing quite like hearing the opinions of fellow RC pilots on what they think of a model, especially in a luckier position where we are today because it has been out for a while uh, and as such we can get on and uh, share that opinions with everybody else. So brilliant. So yeah, do share it with everybody else. Right, anyway, get back. To, we need to get this thing built. So that looks like we need some servos. So but again, I'm hesitant of going any further. Uh, oh, and I was, we'll get back to the point I was trying to make, is that where do you work out where your servos go? Well, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're not going to hit anything, okay? So with that in mind, you literally, what I do is work out where the spar goes, and I'll do it again afresh. So we'll work out, and you'll notice that I'm using masking tape, so we'll know, know the spar goes across there, and I'll quickly pencil in, where the spar is across the top, if I could find a good pen, which I don't own, so that's gonna be fun. So you'll have to take my word for it. We, we, you kind of get the gist. We've marked in where the spar is. We've also got a spar which is going across the wing as well. So we've kind of ruled out the places where we should not put a servo, 
Okay, we've ruled it out because we don't want to put a servo right on top of the spar because that would cause weakness. Uh, and also we got to think about this, uh, that's a piece of carbon fiber strip running down the wing. And of course, we don't really want the servo on the opposite side of there because we're gonna have to go underneath it or go over it with the servo wires, which, wires, which is sometimes not that e friend, excuse me, friendly to do. Also a consideration is center of gravity. The further which we have the servo up the front, the easier it is, is going to be for us to uh, hit the center of gravity for the model. That means that we can put maybe perhaps a larger motor on the back of the model too. So that's always a consideration when it goes around the placement of the servo. Also, it's kind of an absolute no-brainer that we put the servos on, on the top of the model. Now that's for a couple of different reasons. The reason why we put servos on the top of the model is first that they are protected so this is a flying wing so it's always going to be this is always going to be very close to the ground when it's being left when you're landing number two uh, is ease of access okay so when you're flying this model you can vi quickly very visually very it's very easy for you to visually check the model itself to make sure the the servo and the linkages and the push rod and things like that are all intact so you don't end up throwing a model which is inadvertently damaged and you don't spot it because that's I've done that before and then one of the surveys have been under, underneath the model okay the other reason uh, is to do with torque uh, and I'll do a quick example here is that we've got a push rod and even over short distances you'll notice that it ha has the ability to move and the thing is is that where are you m what action are you most likely to do to cause the most strain on the servo, the clevis, the uh, control horn, the servo control horn, the push rod, uh, and the control horn at the back. And when you are gonna cause the most amount of pressure or have the largest requirement, or, yeah, you the most amount of pressure, is that when you're pulling back on the sticks, that is the most common movement for you as a pilot is on the sticks to pull back uh, to either flare the model or to do a loop because you you don't see most pilots doing bunts with models which is instead of pulling back on the sticks and doing a loop that way is that you come in this way and then go underneath okay most people don't have that or do that very often uh, in their arsenal and again by the way that's a really good move for you to do come across the flight line again you've got to know your model really well because how well, it's going to cope with that. Going upwards is really easy because you've got unlimited, basically, you've got unlimited height. Uh, but if you're coming across the flight line, you've got a nice bit of height on, plenty enough for your model to do it. Push down on the stick, on the elevator stick, and bunt back round. Okay, so you go round like that. Really nice move. But do it when you first start playing around with that. Do it really high in the sky. Do it right in front of you so you can control it. Uh, or bail out as the case may be but just get height is definitely your friend uh, when you start playing around with bunts so and get just get used to your model and how well it reacts anyway I digress uh, with coming back to the, the amount of pressure on the push rod is that that 90 percent of your movement uh, is going to be pulling back on the sticks as such you're going to be in tension you're going to be pulling the push rod forwards now if you have the servo underneath the wing like on a z84 which is just over here. There we go, it's one of the failings of the Z84. Well, it's not a failing of a Z84, it's only an issue when you could stupidly overpower it and you'll get into this issue, is that what happens is that if you think about a Z84, which has the servo on the bottom, is that you're pushing that, you wanna push that surface that way, the servo is going that way, the control rod, the push rod is bending, okay, and the clevis is creaking. So look how much bends in there. So when you've got a surface under high amounts of pressure, which is typically you pulling back on the stick, you don't want your servo underneath the wing, okay? And that's because this push rod would bend. I've had clevises bend up underneath as well. Yeah, Z84, fantastic model. You only ever run into issues when you over, seriously overpower it, uh, and you can get yourself into a lot uh, you go to pull back on the sticks or you go into a big dive and you've got loads of airspeed on there. You're really caning the nuts off the motor and you're diving towards the ground and you just can't pull out because the surfaces, they're, they're flexing, the push rod's bending, the clevis is bending, the servo doesn't have enough torque in it or even if it does, does have enough torque, enough torque in it, it can't push the surface around. 
So bottom mounted servos are fine for models which are, they've got plenty, they're not gonna go fast in short. However, or are gonna be underneath high amounts of torque. However, in a flying wing, well, you've only got two movable surfaces. And as such, if you've got that, if you've got a servo on the top of the model, it's pulling it that way. So you, the, the rod's not getting forced to bend, okay? You're pulling it, it's in tension. The clevis on the back is being pulled. So even if it was made of plastic and it, it might bend, it's not gonna bend because it's being pulled. And that's why having servos on the top of a model is always the ideal situation. Visibility, torque, and the original reason which I frankly forgotten. So apologies if I went off on a bit of a bender about the placement of a servo, but it's really important because it does make a difference in those moments of panic or those moments of utter joy because you're smashing it around the sky. Place servo placement does play a big role. Uh, I can see there's been some good uh, comments in there on going on the right hand side of the screen. By the way, if you are watching this back at a later date uh, underneath this video, you might need to press the live chat button so you can see the chat which is going on. Uh, just pausing for a moment for a question from Vince. Uh, and Vince asks, in fact, why didn't I move this back to the main screen? There we go. Right, Vince asks, are you fitting Crossfire Matt? What do you do with regards to the Immortal T? Mine always hits the ground when landing and I'm worried about snapping them. So Vince, yes, my plan is to use a Crossfire receiver in here, mainly because I found a Crossfire, crossfire receiver, which I didn't even know I had in another box the other day. So that's happy days. I don't know what, oh, that must've come out of the XUAV claims, which I decommissioned. We'll have a chat about that a different day. So yes, my goal was to use the Crossfire. The reason why I wanted to use Crossfire was, I've got two options. I can either use Crossfire, which would probably be my preferred choice, or I could use the L9R receiver. And the reason for that is that I highly suspect that with the Firefly, once it's built, is that I'm gonna be flying in and around trees and maybe around the hedge line height, which is that, again, we're in summer here in the UK, so everything is in full leaf. and. A D4R2 receiver will be okay, but it won't be okay enough for the things which I intend doing with it. So yeah, most likely Crossfire, uh, mainly because I've found a free or like free receiver, which I had it, obviously I bought it. Uh, so yeah, really good question, Vince. That's most likely what I'm gonna be going with. And because literally it's only gonna be a two uh, servo, well, two servos and a motor, I'm not going to run out of pinouts uh, on the uh, little tiny board, which I've got. Is it Nano, or the Micro one, which has only got four channel outputs? So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be using for mine. So, yeah, really, really good question. Uh, now, ah, sorry, to answer the other part of your question, yeah, it'll be fine vertically, absolutely fine. Uh, one thing you can do, which I didn't do on the Ranger, so it comes down to placement in the wing. So, if I come up here and show you, is that with the antenna, you basically have two ways of, of mounting it. You can either mount it in from the top, okay, or you can mount it in from the bottom. What I'll be doing with mine is mounting it in from the top so that we come up, so I don't know, half an inch or something up near the top. So there's only a little bit poking around in the bottom. Uh, and that way, yeah, even, even when you do hit it, because you will hit it every single time when you're landing, uh, is that it's up a little bit more than what it was before. And to be frankly honest, it will just bend, okay? And the other thing, uh, when it comes to the crossfire, is the, the antennas are not prohibitively expensive, and they are easy to retrospectively fit a new one, because you can get it at the pin. One thing, so I, I don't wanna sound like a TBS fanboy, and I do think it's stupidly expensive, especially to what FR Sky did with the R9 system. However, it was well thought through. You can get access to the antenna. If you do snap one off or you lose one or something like that, you can replace it and it's not rocket science to replace it. So uh, Vince, yeah, mine will be mounted in from the top. So it won't be down, as down far as it what it could be. But don't forget, you could also reinforce it. There's nothing stopping you from putting a plastic shield on top of it uh, or putting some plastic in front of it. Uh, obviously, I, 
<laughs> don't put carbon rod in front of it. That would be a little bit daft. Uh, but there are things which you could do to it. Um, the other thing which you could do is maybe just only, if you've got the antenna being pushed in from the top, I'll flip across to the other camera so we can look at it in more detail, is that, uh, choose the wrong one, there we go. Uh, if you've got the uh, antenna being mounted in from the top, what you could do is that as the cable goes backwards and then you've got the receiver underneath the wing, is that what you could do is just mount the antenna in with sellotape. So if it does want to push up, Okay, obviously, because I'm assuming the model's laminating, is that the cell tape will give way. Okay, so if you laminate it in, there's no way in a blue monkey is that's coming out, is there? However, if you put a piece of cell tape on the antenna, is that if it does get shunted upwards, the cell tape will, would hopefully give, uh, and yeah, so you don't end up knackering an antenna. But on the flip side, they're not terribly expensive uh, and not too hard to change because it's only a tiny little plug. Really good question, by the way, Vince. Good one. Um, Mafia says strongly recommend the V Crossfire antenna. It's almost unbreakable. Happy to, I haven't tried one of those myself yet. Uh, let's have a quick. I worked out a servo mod. <laughs> uh, so Jack, what I'm guessing what you did with the Z84 was cut the fins off the back so you can put a bigger prop on the back. Yep, yeah, that would absolutely work as well. Uh, good morning, Alan, as well. Uh, let's have a quick Firefly on the way. Going to use Easy HF and a Lion Punk. Yeah. Uh, EZUHF works really, really well. Uh, I had a conversation a while ago uh, on this YouTube channel about the different UHF systems. Uh, my timing was perhaps awful because I'd already been in chosen to go down the TBS route, which I want to hasten to add, actually really happy with. I have no complaints at all about it. I actually find it very, it just, it works, you know? So I can't complain about something which just works. And the only one issue which I had uh, is <laughs> ironically my fault due to a power setting. And I would I also feel very happy about my personal choice for TBS, uh, uh, the Crossfire kit, is because I fell safed, not very far off the ground, perhaps behind quite a large wooded area perhaps not in sight and yeah you'll, you'll see why I'm being hesitant on what I'm saying here you, you kind of get the idea uh, and I fell safe at a much lower level compared to Andy who fell safe at a much higher level with Dragon Link so that will give you an idea of what we were doing and that might give you an idea on why I am quite happy with TBS Crossfire because even on the 10 milliwatt setting, I was able to fly lower and further, deeper behind a woodland where Dragon Link fell safe. So make your own opinion there but mine is quite high. So yeah, anyway, we don't rest. We're supposed to be looking at the Firefly. I like how we get derailed on these chats because you're having a chat. I'm getting in there as well. Uh, so do remember, if you've just joined here, we are supposed to be looking at the Firefly uh, from E-Wings. We will get back to that in a moment. Uh, but I've got derailed from your live chat, which is on going on on the right-hand side of the screen. And remember, those of you which are watching the recorded version, don't forget, you can pass your comments and opinions down in the comment section uh, underneath this video. So I'm not looking at the chat anymore. Uh, Mafia says, so this is a TBS fan club. Somebody mentioned that, whatever his name was, uh, basically announced that, that the Crossfire kit was like the second coming of Jesus Christ. I think that was the best one of it. I, I, I'm, I'm not up to the hype or anything like that. I just appreciate through using it, how well it's performed. To be frankly honest, if I went back and looked at the equation again, I because of the ridiculously inexpensive cost of the R9 system, I perhaps would go back, excuse me, I would perhaps go that route instead uh, of the TBS Crossfire um, because it's so much cheaper, so much cheaper. So do keep that in the back of your mind. I, I, I'm just impressed because it has worked really really well and the one incidence where I had an issue I was able to outperform Dragon Link and that I am very happy about. 
Right, let's go back to this desk because we are supposed to be building a firefly. Right, we'll get into the placement. Of <laughs> so let me just wind this back to what, what we were chatting about. We were talking about the placement of the servo and then we went off on a bit of a bender on why top mounted servos are a well, far better choice compared to bottom mounted servos. Uh, in short, wherever possible, always put your servos on the top for ease of access, ease of building, stronger servos uh, because all your equipment is then being used in tension when you're pulling back on the sticks, which is what you do 90% of the time. So anyway, top mounted servos, always the way to go. There are some instances where lower ones, maybe aesthetics, is there probably the only reason why you would ever consider putting a servo on the bottom of a wing is because it would be more aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing that it was on the bottom and not the top. That's the only real reason I can give you uh, for using a bottom mounted servo. Anyway, progressing on, the servo placement, that's the wrong one, let's go and choose the right one put that on there. What I did is get myself a set square. I haven't got one here, so you're gonna have to use my judgment on that one. But that line there is that I worked out where I wanted the control horn to be on the, the actual surface. Uh, and again, if I'd gone any further than that, then I'd be running into this bar here. So that placement there looks about the best. Uh, I put it on there, put some tape onto the wing, drew a line on there. Now the crucial point is, is that once I'd chosen it on one side, I would have then measured where that is, turned the ruler, so we'll say six inches, I would have turned the ruler over and then done six inches on the other wing and then got the set square and marked that one out. Uh, and that's what, that's how you can get them in exactly the same space because it's really easy because all you do is just draw the line on there and then you've got cross point on there and you've just come down say quarter of an inch uh, and that's where you've got your servo to go. Right, supposed to be building that. All we've done is chit chat. Servos, mm, this is gonna be fun. I'd like to put some half decent ones in here, but the thing is, is that I kind of bought some wing servos the other day, uh, and um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think wing servos are well. Have you, I, I don't, don't think I've put the video out. Have you ever seen a wing servo before? There you go, I hope you can learn something new here today. That is a wing servo. Excuse me, itchy lip. A wing servo is like that. It's very, very thin, so it's perfect placement for, uh, in, funny enough, a wing. Uh, and as and the other thing about these ones, and these are Corona ones, I've got the DS239MGs, I've got all three different types, uh, which you can pick up from Hobby King, uh, and they are stupidly torquey. Uh, what was the settings on here? Four kilograms worth of torque. Yeah, stupidly torquey. Again, Corona, really good brand. Uh, never had an issue with a uh, with a Corona servo uh, beyond ones which I really hit hard. <laughs> so yeah, there there are limits uh, to what these servos can take, uh, and you've got to hit the model hit the model really really hard to um, get to the limits on them. So yeah, could be using them. I do have a pair of them, but the slight issue with that is the is the lead long enough? I don't know. I might consider those. I'm gonna have a look through the rest of my uh, servo box. I am somewhat hesitant on using uh, what I would normally use. In fact, the servos which I'm using in the Vorti, uh, which are the Tower Pro MG90S, the genuine fake ones from Banggood, because they're fine, uh, in short. So I'm a little bit hesitant on using those, and the reason why I'm hesitant on using those is because I just know that I'm gonna be wrapping it around some trees. There's some random servers which I pulled out of a model the other day. I think we might be making our decision here and now because, yes, we will be going for those. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be going and putting some decent servos in there. They are Corona DS238 MG servos. I've had probably not as many as I should do of those servos, but mainly because they're about six quid each, maybe seven quid each, but they're really, really good servos. Uh, and those are the ones which I'm gonna go and stick in this model. So yay, happy days on that. They, they're, yeah, just standard, slightly larger than a standard nine gram servo. Uh, and I've got, a, again, a ridiculous amount of torque. The lead's gonna be long enough. Where's the specification? Yeah four kilograms of torque on there. 
uh, and it is full Metal Gears uh, inside them as well. Re like, re if you want a good quality servo, then you go for a Corona. Uh, and there's two basically two different sizes which you can use. You can either have these, which are two three eights, or you can go for the nine three nine, which are smaller um, and more like the size of the twelve gram or the nine gram servo. They're metal geared, and again, they're in the four kilograms worth of torque range. Really, really good ones, and a decent amount of speed on them as well. So, uh, yeah, coming back to this model later, I do feel that I might need to, yes, I'm gonna have to go in there uh, and adapt that hole to fit the uh, new servo, which I'm gonna be putting in. Uh, if I run that straight across to the back, yes. Uh, and I'm what I'm doing is I'm eyeing up where that servo wire is gonna come straight across there, uh, and also that it's got an extra bit on there just to go into the fuselage, which we have. Uh, so we, I don't have to extend the servo wires or anything like that, which is an absolute pain in the ass. There's no other words for it. So as I've already been in cut out there on that side, I'm going to use, yeah, I think I've already stuck a knife in there. Damn it. Right. So what I'm going to do, just trying to work out what's going on here. Right. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the servo line here. That is going to throw me off a touch. Uh, when it comes to the Elevon, so I'll have to revisit that later. Uh, but this one, I'm gonna get my, I, need, I need a biro, so, oh no I don't, I'll tell you what I can do. Take it down, cover it up, and we'll start again. There we go, that'll do it. Right, so I want that there. Lining up the servo uh, on that line, and uh, I'm just gonna stick a, a quick pen around it, so if I ever move it, or move it in a vert. That pen is absolute rubbish. Right, that's better. So if I inadvertently move the servo in a moment, like now, because I've forgotten what I've done, well, I've lost what I've done with the knife, uh, is that I know whether I've moved it or not, and I can put it back and replace it back into where I'd like it. So let's go on and get that in there, like so. And I'm just cutting around the outline of the servo. The idea is here is that I'm cutting out the outline into the masking tape so that when I come back in a moment and remove the servo is that I've got the outline there ready and waiting for me to come back over and then dig it in to the wing itself or into the model itself. Brilliant. So this is where I'd normally go and suggest you get a Sharpie pen and what I would suggest with a Sharpie pen is putting it in so you would mark on the knife how far you deep you want it to go in. I'm not gonna do that. I can see that there's some writing on there. That's what I'm gonna aim for. And now all I'm gonna do is go in there, aim for the writing, draw straight across, make sure I get right up into the corners as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna create myself like little blocks and you'll find out why we're creating little, little blocks in just a moment. Uh, so it basically makes out like we're able to, to actually get the squares out of the model itself. Right, there we go, across, might as well go all across. You'll also notice I'm using a little saw action as well, and the reason I'm using a saw action with it is because this blade is starting to blunt now. You would actually, you'd be really surprised on how much black EP foam, EPP foam blunts uh, knives. I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I surely can't, I can't be the only one. I'm using decent premium uh, blades, the Swan ones, yeah, Swan Mortons, uh, and they're still blunting really, really quickly uh, with black EPP foam. It's it's tough stuff, you know? Uh, not that I'm complaining at all. Right, we've got that in there. And all I now do is just go in there, get the pliers, and twist. And just, yeah, twist. Twist. There we go. And get in there and dig that out. And tell you what, while I'm doing that, I'm going to flip back. Uh, and have a look at your chat as well. Let's have a quick look. Yes, my fire's gen <laughs> genuine fakes, yeah. Uh, the, where I got that saying from is that we'd gone, uh, when I first met the wife, we'd gone away on a holiday to Koz, uh, one of the, I think it's one of the Greek islands. And it, anyway, we took a day trip across to uh, Turkey uh, and there was a chat there no, it wasn't a chat, it was a sign that said genuine fakes. They they didn't hold, they obviously don't have any trademark laws or very 
sketchy trademark laws, etc., etc., over in Turkey or the way at the time. Uh, Bodrum, I think it was called. Uh, and they literally had a sign out the front just saying genuine fakes. And of course, it made me laugh, so it's always uh, stuck with me, that one. So, yeah, genuine fake. But those Tower Pro servers, you can complain. I've, I've had over 150 of them. I must have had over 150 of them. And I've had issues with two of them. Uh, and those, I swear, blind were the two cheap ones I bought off eBay by mistake. So, yeah, or well, when I thought that they were cheaper on eBay, because I thought, well, they can't be that bad. Uh, and they really were that bad. <laughs> they really, really were that bad. Let's get in here. Right. Like so. Let me get that big. I'm just using a knife just to pull most of it out. And I do have an issue over here with the lead, so I'm going to cut that out now. In here, like so. Come on. Here we go. Just want to see if we can get that in. Right, I'm not that far off. So what I've been and done is that I've been and dug out the trench for the servo, but we've still got quite a lip on the servo. So what I'm going to do from there, and this is where you'd normally do this, and I do stress, do this in a well-ventilated area, is go and grab my blowtorch and all I've got is a bit of bent push rod. Now, those of you who should join me at the very, very beginning, uh, you would have seen me doing this on the, at the very beginning using the blowtorch, heating up uh, the push rod, which, of course, you can bend into any design uh, you like. Uh, we just go and get it to glow. And uh, we just go in there and we're just going to finish the basin. Now, I'd, I do have... Uh, a soldering gun, which we can also use for exactly the same task, uh, but that is, uh, yeah, it can take longer in short, and plus it's down there, and I don't want to be un doing plugs and stuff while we're live on YouTube, so that is definitely an option for us to do, but that one, it, I've already had, I already had the blowtorch here, and look at that, that's gone and sat down absolutely beautifully in there, and I've realized one thing which I do need to do is that we need to think about the push, uh, the control horn, which is on top of this servo. It needs to come forwards and it will come forwards on an angle. So I'm cutting an angle in that way. And I need to come up here like so and cut an angle in that side so that the control horn has now got four movements uh, backwards and forwards as the case may be. So brilliant, that one's gone in there really, really nicely. Oh, another thing with the uh, Corona surveys is that I have noticed that they do tend, to, when they when they come out of the box, they do tend to be pre-scented for you. Such a small little thing, but after surveys which turn up, uh, which I've got here or been through, the genuine fake Tower Pro ones, uh, is that they tend to, they tend to need re-centering or to be uh, at least go through the servo tester, whereas the Corona ones. Uh, they're normally absolutely fine. So yeah, brilliant. There's a really nice mod on there. So that's really nice fit in there. The only thing which I need to worry about now is getting the servo wire across. So what I'll basically do, and I won't do this until uh, I've got the other one in, is that if you have a look, the consideration, bloody great big battery out of there, is that that's where the push rod, that's where the main spar is, just there. And I want that to come across as straight as possible and then through that wing so I can then get a, uh, a, a, a extension on the end of that servo there uh, so I can get it into the receiver in the front so uh, yeah and I want to make sure that both sides are exactly the same as well so yeah that looks like exactly where I'm going to go with it but I'm not going to do that until I've been and done the other wing right how are we done for time 9.53 right those of you if there are some of you which have been enjoying us a little bit late here, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Today is a build day. It's a live session which we do here every week at the workbench. Today we are supposed to be, I'm saying supposed to be because we've got derailed a few times in, comment, in chat from those of you which are on live. Uh, we are supposed to be building the Firefly, which is a one meter wire cut EPP model uh, from Ewan over at Ewing's FPV. After with the live session, I'll put a link to it in the video description for you. Non-affiliate, I hasten to add. Uh, do keep in the back of your mind, this model was definitely bought out of my own money for my own abuses. Uh, and it's about time we get it out and it's about time we get it abused because I'll be honest with you, it's been sat here in a box with a couple of other models which uh, I've been busy doing other stuff. 
and that's also one of the reasons behind doing these build Saturdays so that we can get some of these models which really need to be out there and get them flown get them built so we can get out and fly and we can see what they're really like and I know and again this is one of the nice things about being late here to the party is that I already know that several of you already own a Firefly and I already know that it's a really really good model so yeah a little intro for those of you who should join us a little bit late those of you who are on to the uh, in the live chat uh, Vince says where's Luna Lou she's down there sound asleep like I said we did a 10k walk this morning and uh, she's knackered and I'm gonna go and stop for some more breakfast in a minute as well bless her so she and it chucked it down with rain as well it wasn't supposed to rain we got halfway round literally halfway round and then the heavens opened thank goodness I had an umbrella but the sun was still out it was quite surreal this morning anyway I digress let's have a quick look Julian says I like to melt foam I did that with the GPS and whoops <laughs> uh, uh, Jibba Jabba says I can smell the burning foam from here yes not a very nice thing to do uh, I'm doing that because I'm trying to get this done here at the boat bench but obviously you would use perhaps a little bit more common sense and do it outside or at least have the office door, office door open when you go and do it with yours uh, Jack says I have an overpaired pistol grip hold uh, dedicated yes absolutely where's the pistol grip so you know you may or may not let this one the other tool which you can use uh, is one of these in fact I've just put that up on the, the gun up there uh, it's from a Sealy I think I paid about 45 quid for it absolutely it's a pistol gun absolutely brilliant uh, for melting holes uh, in server holes of cleaning up EPP foam uh, it does work on EPO foam but that stuff really stinks really bad uh, but yeah if you need finesse blowtorch and the wire works really well if you need crudeness, crudeness or you need to hog out large areas of foam why that CD gun because it's just unparalleled uh, really really good uh, yeah common sense what's that don't know I <laughs> wasn't past most of that <laughs> uh, yeah I oh, had yeah, a few other branches I hit the bold branch <laughs> on the way down in the trees anyway digress we're supposed to be getting this one built Mm. So, I, while I've been chatting, I've also been here thinking away to myself. I am going to set, uh, normally what I would use is the uh, Runcam 2 camera uh, as my camera of choice up in the nose. But I think I've, the Runcam 3S is working really well. I think I can hide it enough. There's enough nose in the Firefly to, to sink in. There's me chatting about it. I'll show you. I'm pretty sure it was sat over here on the desk. Uh, where's the other one? I'll give you a comparison. If I was using the run cam two, yeah, that would fit in there lovely, that's for sure. And of course it would be nice and aerodynamic. If I push this back onto the right camera, ask the question. Never a that question. Right, there you go. Uh, is that that would sink in there absolutely lovely into the nose. However, saying that, I think what I am going to do in this one uh, is mount in the run cam 3S in there. So I can either use the 3S or I can use the Runcam 5, which I've also bought as well. Uh, so I've got some options in here. So at least that battery could be charging it, charging itself when I'm flying. And plus, pretty sure the 3S is heavier than the Runcam 2. And I definitely think this model is going to need a little bit of help getting some weight up in the nose. Especially considering the motor, which I intend put, excuse me, putting a 10 putting on, on the back of the model as well. Right, let's get into the other wing so we can get some at this part way here. What do I need to do after I've been and got this model built? Uh, after I've been and done the surveys, I will need to get the receiver into the wing. So as we were chatting, I'll get the video transmitter out onto one wing. I'll probably get it out looking where the spar is. Again, that will influence where I put the video transmitter. As many of you know, I tend to like to try and get the video transmitter right out on the edge of the wing. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do that in this case because I think we might run into an issue with CG. So I'll probably get the video transmitter up here uh, on this piece here and the receiver, uh, because it weighs considerably less on the right hand wing, uh, is that I'll aim to get the uh, receiver right out on that wing tip out there so it's far as away from the video transmitter. and 
it kind of balances the wing out a little bit too. So yeah, that's the plan, uh, which I'm going to go with. Yeah, get the crossfire micro receiver out on that wing. Yeah, that's the plan. And just make an extension cable and run that all the way through the middle of the model. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way forwards. Anyway, next one is, what have I done with the control boards? Right. The bit you don't want to lose is the bag of all the goodies in it, because that will have the uh, control horns for the servo in there, and that would be no fun at all. Same approach as the last one. Going to put the servo where I'd want it, put a pen around the outside. Uh, you'll notice that I am using masking tape for this because it's, well, A, because it's stupidly cheap, and is that up the right way around? Uh, and B, uh, if I don't like what I do, then I can literally just rip it off and do it again. So, right, in fact, I need a little bit more over there. There we go. Yeah, what is it, a pounder roll? Yeah, seriously cheap and works out really, really well. I'm just using the other one as a reference to what I did there. Same again, pen around the outside, doesn't need to be precise, it just needs to be roughly in the right place so that I can put the servo back in the same spot just in case I move it. <laughs> and I've learned that so many times now. Do take a few moments just to to put a pen mark around it uh, so you know where it should be because even then I just knock the servo uh, just cut it around the outside so I can visually put it back uh, in the right place right, and we'll get in and around there and I tell you what I am going to go and wrap up in just a few moments time uh, for this Saturday's build session because I need to get on and get this servo in you've already seen me put one servo in and uh, that side is going to be exactly the same side as the other side. And to be honest, uh, I'm trying to keep these build Saturdays to just an hour. Uh, and we have talked about not only, well, we haven't really got that far in the build of the Firefly, if I'm honest. Uh, what I'm going to go on to do today, I'm going to work on the little Vortini. Those of you which are on the live session for Thursday, the little Vortini turned up. Uh, that one is in progress. So that's a baby Vortigaunt. Uh, or ironically from exactly the same company who makes the Firefly. So we've got that one coming out very shortly. Uh, I'll get that one built. I'll also do a build overview video to that one as well. Uh, and also get that one laminated up too. Firefly, the Firefly, I'll plow on with that one as well. Uh, all kind of straightforward. It just takes time. We'll be laminating the Firefly, that's for sure. We'll be laminating uh, the little Vortini uh, as well. Uh, and yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. So I think for some of you which perhaps have never built an EPP model before, don't be put off. It's really straightforward, it's especially if you use masking tape. Because, uh, in fact, I think I did a video. No, I didn't do the video actually. Uh, I posted it on the YouTube channel yesterday as a, a post. Um, by the way, if you don't know about this yet, after we finish today's live session, underneath this video, click on Rank the Nuts Off and then click on the Community tab because you'll find that very shortly why that's going to be super important. But for now, click on Rank the Nuts Off and then click on the Community tab. Uh, and if you literally, literally look past the last post or two, uh, you'll see what I did with the Vortini. All I did was mock up uh, using tape and some pins and put all the different parts in the model itself. And I, wasn't, I didn't put an ounce of glue anywhere near that, or a drop of glue anywhere near it, and I was able to work out where I needed different parts so I could hit the center of gravity full well knowing that with all the parts which I was gonna use for the model. And of course, now that I know that, I was then able to mark out where I wanted all the parts, then cut them out, and now I know, now know that when I commit to gluing the model up, that I have everything in the right place, and I won't have an issue, issue with CG, something which I have had a problem with in the past where I've gone, yeah, that should be all right, that'll be all right there, and then found I've got a ridiculously tail heavy model and I've had to add a load of lead to the model as well. Not a great experience to, to go through. So for the sake of using some masking tape and some pins, you can mock up the model beforehand and then you can work out where all the different bits and bobs go and it does make things an awful lot easier. So yeah. EPP models like this, the only one thing which you really need to know, or one skill which you would, you, you're you gonna learn, is how to laminate a model, uh, especially because these models really do appreciate being laminated, I can tell you that firsthand. Uh, and if you've never laminated the model, again, shameless plug, I've got a video which will show you 
how to laminate models. It's meant for people like me who'd never laminated the model before. Again, after this live version, click on rag the nuts off. Scroll down that page and it's what, there's, there's a three part series and I go from looking at the big picture of why you would want to laminate a model, etc., etc., all the things you would need. It's not very expensive to do. The benefits definitely weigh out any costs because the cost to it, yeah, if you total a model, then if you factor in all the time, the actual cost of the model, etc., etc., uh, you get your money back pretty much straight away. Uh, and I'll take you through all the steps. I'll even take you through in the parts two and three some of the smaller parts, which are, and the other uh, circumstances which you would run into as well. So anyway. I digress. I would like to say a moment. So I am pausing just for a moment to look uh, at the live chat on there uh, as well. Right. Uh, it is time for me to wrap up. Those of you which have been enjoying in live, I want to say a massive thank you to you. If you have enjoyed today's live session, don't forget to give us the thumbs up on the video as well. If you have any questions or comments about anything which you've been and seen here in today's live build session, don't forget you can leave that as a comment underneath this video. If you are new here, welcome aboard. What an episode for you to join us on. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and also to hit the bell notification so that YouTube updates you the next time the next session is out. Which reminds me, tomorrow we have the Ranger 1600 Maiden uh, and we really do give it some beans tomorrow. Uh, that's live tomorrow evening. Uh, I've already set it out as being a premiere, uh, so don't forget to go and press the uh, set reminder button on that one so YouTube note reminds you when that episode is out, which is tomorrow evening, I think about 7 o'clock. So we've got that episode coming out as well. And also we have a couple of updates in the next week or two. Look out for those two because I've got a collection of other things going on here and also some, also, uh, also some important updates but if you want to stay abreast of what's going on, you will have noticed that I haven't been posting as much as what I used to be doing in the Facebook group. Instead, I will be focusing upon that YouTube community tab, uh, which is here on YouTube. Uh, so look out for some of the updates on that very, very shortly, because I've got quite a long list of things which I'd like to start posting and querying you on uh, for projects which are coming up here in the very near future. So with that said, it is time for me to go. There's nothing really more for me to say than to say thank you uh, to you for taking the time to join me here live. I appreciate that and I'll see you again. The next live stream which I'm planning is next Saturday morning. Hopefully, the fly, fly, Firefly will be built then. The same for the Vortini. If you would like to be kept up to date on the build progress of these two, click on Rag the Nuts underneath this video then click on the community tab because that is where I'm going to be posting all updates uh, for the very foreseeable future. Literally between now and Christmas, that's where I'm going to be focusing my attention on the community tab. So with that said, myself, Matt, thank you very much. I'll see you again shortly. Have a fantastic weekend. In fact, if you're out flying this weekend, I'm really jealous because by the looks of it, I'm not flying this weekend. So I've got a build weekend. I'm going to go, go make myself a fresh cup of coffee, get back here at the bench, and plow on. Anyway, for myself, Matt, cheerios!